Hello everyone, welcome to House Gnome Gaming. I thought we could start a new game today. Uh, this one is called Medieval Dynasty. If you've not heard of it before, it is a medieval, uh, medieval life simulator sim. Uh, I have played this before for quite a while. I'm only okay at it. Uh, this is the type of game where if you die, it's game over and you have to start from scratch every time. Of course, you can always save and cheese it and go back to your old save files. But what's the fun in that? Anyway, um, I do have a city going on that I've been playing for a while, but they've done a few updates that have changed things around since I started that city. And even though I'm already uh, playing on it and I am still playing on it, I thought it'd be fun to start a new city with the changes already incorporated because it does affect um, earlier gameplay that I'm already past. So I thought it would be uh, good to do on the channel. You can do some customization on your game. The default length of the season is three days. Uh, you can change that to longer or shorter. Personally, I have tried it at five days because, like I said, I'm not great at this game. I've also tried it at four days. That's what my current save is on. We're going to try it at three days, which uh, when you get further along, three days is pretty good, but it feels super, super short in the beginning. But that's okay. So let's start the game. I used to have a simple life. Whatever needed doing round the farm, I'd do it. <laughs> Being the eldest son, it's tough. But at least we had a living, and our plates were never empty. Then, the war came. I lost everything overnight. The last thing I remember is father pushing me away yelling for me to run, to live. At first, I didn't know what to do. Then, I remembered. A story my mother once told me. A story about my uncle, Jordan. He made a modest fortune up north, in a peaceful valley far away from the war. For weeks, I held on to that thought. Until the valley from my mother's stories, I could see it. This is where I can start a new life. So we are Ray Samir. That's the name of uh, your character. Your goal is to uh, survive, do questing, and eventually build yourself a little town. Alright, so we can head that way to go to Denica, that way to Dico ah, Gustavia, boy I can't talk, and that way to Hornica. There are dangers out there that will kill us, and it looks like we have lucked into a little mishap here. We're going to collect the stuff that we find. Um, these are random. They get spawned at the beginning of every season in different areas. They'll hang around for a season or two before they disappear. We lucked into having one of those there. Gustovia is this way. So we want to start out in Gustovia. And along the way, we want to pick up... sticks and things like that but i need to make a couple of setting changes here my camera feels very loose and also i want to change this to um third person and i do not remember how to do that and it might actually my keybinds might be better once i get into third person I'm thinking it's V, but I don't remember. I don't see it here either. P. There we go. 
Oh, much better. Oh yeah, that feels better. Just doing that. All right, so here's our inventory. We don't start out with much. We have no weapons. We just picked up the copper sickle. Uh, that does not come default towards us. Uh, we're going to equip the torch. We picked up this hat. We should wear it, but they sell for pretty good money. And right now we are fairly broke with 50 coins. So we're going to sell that. We're also going to sell that sickle. I don't really need it. We're going to hold on to the rye. Um, it its condition shouldn't go down too quickly. And eventually we can thresh it for seeds. The plant. And we've got a little bit of food. This is not going to last very long though. And you don't want to eat your broadleaf plantains for food. You want that as your emergency healing because each one gives you two health. They nerfed that. It used to give you like 10 health per. And while we run along, we want to pick up um, sticks and rocks. So we need to pretty quickly start crafting some weapons. Thanks. What's that? Oh, it's broken rock. Stones are fairly difficult to see until we get um, a certain skill. A nice big stone pile right here, though. That's excellent. Mushroom. We can eat that. Let's craft a. What do we need for that? Ten sticks. Two stones. Alright, let's craft a hammer first. So we need one more stick. Or an axe, not a hammer. Don't want to equip that, but we want to put this on. I like to put it on too, just personal preference. All right, chop down this maple tree. And we are limited into how much uh, we can carry weight wise, and also don't let the tree fall on your head. Now we will turn the logs into spears. We're going to go ahead and craft all four of them into spears. The spears break pretty easily, and if we get attacked by something, that is all we have to defend ourselves with. And we don't want our spear to break on us in the middle of a wolf attack. Put that in slot one. Aha! All right, now we're going to collect items to craft some knives. Um, you'll need a knife in order to skin anything that you kill for meat and fur. They also sell for decent money when you first start out and you're broke and you need that lovely money. And yes, I'll make my way to town eventually. Four knives. Keep one. If you look at the bottom left, you can see um, a circle area. The lighter blue on the outside right is your thirst. The inner sort of orangey color is a food. The outer green on the left is your stamina, and the inner red color is uh, your health. So right now we're starting to get thirsty and a little bit hungry, but we can go for a while before we need to do anything about that. <laughs> All right. Gather more stuff on our way to Stovia. 
and you can see the town from here. stone. It's not a survival game unless the first thing you do is pick up sticks and stones. All those people who play their first person shooters and need a gun, don't they know that all you need to survive is a stick, a stone, and a little bit of plant fiber? Do anything with that, at least according to these survival games. And look, got another cart. These people don't know how to drive, do they? Ooh, cherries. Yum yum. Ooh, a potion. We could sell that for decent money also. Another potion. Ooh, and another potion. Well, these things are lucrative. Easton, I carry that much good stuff. Best you could hope for was a water skin, which, to be fair, is valuable. Yay! Alright, so just by going around doing things, we've picked up a skill. Got ourselves survival skill. So we put them into these uh, talent trees here to increase our abilities. So survival knowledge, sensitive, and iron liver. I have never taken iron liver because if you don't go around eating poisonous mushrooms, you won't get poisoned and I don't eat anything except the morals. Um, and sensitive is better later on, but for right now we are going to put that into survival knowledge so that we pick up that skill a little bit faster. Um, and sensitive will help you with your uh, tolerance to extreme temperatures because in the winter time it gets cold and especially the first winter you're gonna probably find it a little difficult to have enough uh, uh, cold weather gear to stay warm so it allows you to stay outside longer in the cold with your gear as you can see we start out spring day one actually let's take another um, look at that so if you click on the map, that gives you some information. It's uh, 20 degrees Celsius out right now. It's day one at 11 o'clock. Spring, year one, that's of the game. Alphonse the Powerful is currently king, and we are neutral with him. Eventually, you'll be able to take quests from the king's quest giver, which will change your ranking with the crown. And when you do that, that can cut your taxes and give you some other perks, but that's a long way off. And um, we also have this management tab, which we start building our village where we can assign people to homes and jobs. And then we start unlocking um, these building technologies, which allow us to build more buildings. You can see we actually have some points in some of them. Um, we're getting that by doing everyday activities such as picking up the rocks and the sticks and then creating the knives and the axe. Um, if you have questions, there's the knowledge tab, which gives you information. Your journal has your quests. We're currently on Start a New Life to talk to the Castellian who is in Gustovia. Um, he's like the tax collector and uh, general leader for the area but let's keep collecting these plantains because it takes 50 of these buddies to get you from borderline death back up to full health your health will only reset at the end of the season if you get attacked day one you gotta wait until day four for your health to set on its own. Unless you do something to make it set. Like eat broadly plantains or take a potion.
here we're starting to get heavy. Let's uh, make some more knives because that will, for some reason, help cut down on the weight. But I guess I gotta stop picking things up. Go ahead down here to the water, take a drink, and we'll head over to town. And the heavier you get, the slower you walk. And as we go along in the game, we'll be able to um, increase our carry capacity by adding things like bags or skilling into the ability to carry more. Look at all these lovely rocks. Wish I had the capacity to carry more. Ooh, something else to loot. Hello, ducky. All right, I love that plank, but we can't carry that. We can take this flower, though, and fell it. Eventually, we'll be able to turn that flower into bread, but not for a long time. So right now, what it's good for is money. Welcome to Vestovia. Oh. A quick warning, when you go into town, you can do things like steal. Stealing damages your reputation. You need dynasty reputation in order to build buildings and in order to hire workers. Um, if you the whole point of this game is to build a village get married have a baby and don't die until your baby's 18. if you die after that then your heir takes over and you continue playing the game as the heir so you want to grow your village which means you want a good reputation and if you steal things and are caught you do not get a good reputation now get caught is the key word there oh, going the wrong way you can absolutely steal things, just don't get caught at it. Alright, where's this guy at? I ran right past him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, those guys, I didn't see. I didn't think I would see them again when... Those eyes, I didn't think I would see them again. One blue as the sky, the other black like a lump of coal. Uh, do I want to say, are you all right? Look like you've seen a ghost, or that's funny. My grandmother used to describe them exactly the same way. Let's go with that one. So you're not a ghost. Good. For a second there, I thought I lost it. Haha. -ha. But your eyes, you look just like him. Sorry, you must have mistaken me with someone. I'm new in these parts. Just arrived at the valley, actually. My name is Ray Samir. I'm Wanda's son, aren't you? Jordan's nephew. What? Did you know my mother? Not really. I knew of her. We didn't ever actually meet. He wanted to keep his family separate. I don't think I understand. You will. Wait, what do you mean, did I know her? Is she well? I hope she is now, wherever that might be. I've lost both my parents in the war. Damn it, this world. I guess it can be as cruel as it is beautiful. I'm sorry, my boy. Nobody should lose their, lo lose their loved ones at such a young age. It's okay they've died so I could live and I plan to make the best of life in order to honor their sacrifice or yeah I don't really want to talk about that. Let's honor their sacrifice. That's very mature of you. I'm sure they would be proud hearing that. You mentioned my uncle Yerdon. I actually came here looking for him. Oh race mirror I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Your uncle Yerdon, I assume I'm saying this right, is no longer with us. He passed away three years ago. I'm so sorry. I understand how you must feel. He was a dear friend of mine. So that's it. I'm the only one left. Or, oh no, that can't be. What happened? Don't worry. He died peacefully in his sleep. He didn't suffer. I can promise you that. So what should I do now? You're free to go wherever you like and start a new life. I hereby grant you the permission of the Castellian to build and farm on any unutilized land in the valley. 
Construct yourself a house and see what comes next for you. You can even build a whole village if you please. There are many travelers passing through. Maybe some of them would like to join your settlement. Just like that, I can take the land free of charge. Well, you have to pay taxes to the king annually, but apart from that, you are free to do as you please. As long as you don't break the law, of course. Or at least, if you don't get caught doing so. That sounds amazing. The valley looks beautiful as well. I think I'll stay here and see what fate has in store for me. I'm glad to hear that. You can find resources all over the land. Grab a few rocks and sticks from the ground and craft yourself a simple axe. With it, you can cut down trees and chop them into logs. Then you can create a wooden hammer that will be crucial in the building process. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. When you build yourself a home, come back to Gastovia and talk to my wife. Dobrenega. Dobrenega? Oh. She manages the tavern. Ask her to feed you. You must be famished. And then grab some beers for both of us and come back. I'll tell you some stories about Yerdin. That sounds like a plan to me. Alright. A new beginning. Collect some sticks and stuff. First, let's find somebody to sell this stuff to. I think he's typically up here. Edwin. Stranger. Show me your wares never disappoint. No, they never do. Okay, feathers are um, a good way to make money, collecting feathers, especially once you get a hunter's cabin. You can use them to make arrows, but we're not going to need that for a while, and we'll be able to collect plenty of feathers. Again, the flower, we don't need that for a while. Gosh. Oh, hold on to that. Keep all my food, but I do not need potions. And I love the hat, but you can see I can sell that for 65 right now. Eventually, I'm actually going to want to buy a hat from somebody, but I need the money more at the moment. Sell it. Uh, I hate to do that. Should I, should I, should I, should I? How much money I got now? 147. I'm torn. Money's so hard to get at the beginning unless you craft 5 million knives. Sold. And sell that copper sickle. Sell those knives. And that's everything. And we're now down to 31 out of 35 kilograms. Man, we just do not get much. Gosh, I forgot how little you get in the beginning to carry. Oh well, it is what it is. But we now have 368 gold. Have a good day. All right. Let's go collect some sticks and then build a house. Now these fine people here are who you will build your village out of. You can inspect them and see their uh, stats. It takes your stamina to use inspection mode, though. You can see she's two excavation, three hunting, two farming, three diplomacy, two uh, fishing, and three crafting. Oh, that three diplomacy is actually really good. Three excavation, one hunting, one farming, two diplomacy, one fishing, and one crafting. So depending on the needs of your village, you want to check every single village for the people around the campfire. And you'll want to check their stats. We need six sticks for our quest. And you want to check their stats and recruit based off of that. Uh, nobody will be more than three initially on any stat. So if you find a three stat in a stat you like, go ahead and recruit them because um, 
that's as high as you're going to get straight out of recruitment as they work in your village though really i've already got a stone axe as they work in your village they will uh increase those skills until i think level 10. all right i got an axe hammer trees and straw okay let's go to our village and where, where we're going to set up our village and do all this hello mister this is a travel guy now um you? this is new since the last update you can ask him where you can find farm animals to buy vendors to buy from um specific vendors when you click on that or you can use them to travel around have you heard anything interesting recently gustovia you should go there supposedly there's someone in need of your assistance this is how you can find quests i need a ride they're very expensive <laughs> like you can see how much i had to sell just to get my 300 gold i don't want to blow any of it on these rides right now now later on especially um if i want to get up to someplace day. like Hornica unmolested by bandits or wolves then I might take the ride, especially if I'm back in this area and I need to go all the way here or all the way over here. These trips are long and they tend to be dangerous. There's bears, there's wolves, uh, there's these big bison looking things that all of them are hostile and will attack you on site so you have to watch out and then there's bandit camps that you can run across and they are incredibly hard to kill most likely i will die to one of those so anytime you see the screen sign that's a wagoneer he can pick you up and drop you off all right now we need to figure out where we want to start our village though typically when i play i put my village right in here and the reason i do that is there's lots of resources right here it's walking distance to this village is very close it's walking distance to this village it's very close it's not um, super far from gustovia so that it's not a pain in the rear to get there often um, there's a mine right here a cave that you can set up as a miner area so it has a lot of uh, benefits to it. Now you don't have to be close to the cave though. You can like build here and still use that cave. The, the people work during the working hours and they don't when it's off hours. So it doesn't matter how far they have to go, whether or not they've actually reached their destination, they're still working. So I'm wondering if I want to build in a separate area this time. Hmm. I don't know. I really like this area. It's fairly flat, so you can farm. There's some clay there. Yeah, I think we'll stick with that. I just like that area. What can I say? Who's speaking of clay? If you look at the clay pits, sometimes they have uh, things that you can pick up. Like shovels and stuff. There's some clay pits over here. Yes. So these are clay pits. You have to have a shovel to dig them up. And I don't have any shovels. But sometimes people will leave a shovel just stuck in them. Or they'll leave something beside them. But not these, not today. Oh well, I guess they shouldn't get too greedy. We started out with a lot of good stuff. Aaron Cross.
There are berry bushes along the way, but there's nothing we can do to uh, pick them right now. They're not ripe. They'll ripen in summer, and then we can pick them and eat them if we want. That's why I'm collecting the mushrooms. It's really the only um, food we have access to unless we kill an animal. Which is easier to do with a bow than it is with a stick. You can run across the water, but it slows you down. Eventually, we will unlock the ability to hold down the Alt key and use our stamina to give us a special sight to find uh, sticks and rocks and food and we'll be able to see animals. They'll be red if they're hostile and green if they're neutral. Which is particularly helpful when you have to hunt bunnies, especially if you're hunting bunnies for a quest for someone. Yes, we need to build a house to sleep. And here it is. The site of our future home. Isn't it lovely? I know, I'm hungry. Okay, let's eat something. Three. Three food, two water. Two food, one water. Five food. One food and a little bit of poisoning. Oh, those used to not poison you. We are pretty darn hungry. We're going to eat one of these oat rolls. It's going to fill us up. Okay. Well, I guess we can't eat the morals because they give you poisoning now. One tree. You can't dig up the stumps unless you have a shovel. As long as you don't just dig up the stumps, they regrow. And maples are the best. They give you the most logs. We need to build a hammer. What do we need for that? Unlog 10 sticks. As we were cutting the trees, we were getting sticks in our inventory. That's why the weight is going up as well. 
All right, hammer. With that. 32 straw. Reeds give you straw. Our first house. <laughs> well, simple house. Don't want him too close to the road. That looks good. All right, we need 10 stones. We have 13. Eight logs. And we will very slowly walk our way back over because we're so heavy. They have you chop the trees and stuff, but they don't actually have you chop enough of them down. <laughs> you do, I believe, collect just enough straw. Yep. And then you don't get anywhere near the number of sticks you need. You can make these a little more um, sturdy, but you gotta have planks to do that. And we got our first building. The well, uh, which we can use to get water, but in order to use it, we have to have buckets or water skins, neither of which we have right now. Resource storage, once we get to 50, will be very helpful. as well food storage, um, which we only got to get five farming technology for that now, which is good. It used to be a lot more. And 10 for the workshop, which we get building things.
They have to collect just enough sticks for half a house. Any more logs? See any? So the good news is you don't get randomly attacked by like bandits and stuff in this game. So I don't have to worry about, you know, watching out for any people sneaking up on me and murdering me while I do this. And animals can sneak up and try and murder you. But in this area, um, the only thing that you have to worry about are pigs that appear that direction, just past that copse of trees. Give me one more log. Two, three, four, six more logs. Reach that. Keep the trees. So it takes a couple of years, but as long as you don't get rid of the stump, the trees will grow back. So it, unless you have to, don't get rid of the maple stumps. The other trees, so you can get rid of their stumps. They don't give nearly as much lovely logs as the uh, maple tree does. Especially those little skinny ones right here, these birch trees. I think they give two. Oh, that thing falls. And again, when you cut down a uh, tree, you get sticks at the same time. area. Fire. We could cook on this. So if we kill something, we'll collect meat off of it and we can make roasted meat. Um, it's about the only thing, roasted meat and fish are about the only things that we don't need to buy the recipe in order to cook. So you cook it directly on the campfire. Uh, the cauldron, you have to buy the soup recipes and earn enough technology point to even get the opportunity to buy them first, but they are better food. So out and about, um, you can build a campfire. Under one of these. There it is. Take 16 sticks and you can roast meat on those campfires as well. Okay, we're going to go to sleep. We're going to sleep to the next day, not the next season. And it auto saves. And that is where we're going to call it.
Thank you for joining me for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. If you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when new videos come out. Once again, I'm House Gnome Gaming. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.